In this video we're going to talk about miniature paints because if you're just starting out and you're trying to choose one and work out how they work and maybe you just want to pick one colour then it will get confusing because the internet and other things will give you a million different choices. Hello everybody. I wanted to do this video because it's taken me a long time, probably about three years since starting Wargaming and painting miniatures, to start to really appreciate uh, the difference between paint and what miniature paint is, what it's for, what it does, how it behaves. Because that's way more sort of nuanced and subtle than you would expect as a beginner. So if you're watching this and you've just started to think about getting into the hobby, buying some paint, getting going, I'm going to, I'm going to buy some little tiny miniatures, I'm going to paint them. Uh, and I'm going to go out and buy some paint and get it on that model. Then this video is for you, if you've never worked with paint before in particular, but also if you've been mucking around with paints for a while and Maybe you've stick to one or two brands and you're thinking about switching um, or you want to experiment a little bit to try and get a bit more out of your paints then this might also be of use. But to start off with, in front of you is a small demonstration of the problem I'm trying to explain and solve to you in this video. If you're going to go out and buy miniature paint, as in paint specifically designed and marketed and sold for painting miniatures, um, then uh, it would appear to be a straightforward process. So some people would think, right, well, I'm gonna just have to pick a brand. So let's say you chose Citadel, which is Games Workshop paint. This is an old design, by the way, of Citadel, but anyway. This is Games Workshop paint. Um, say that you say, right, I'm gonna paint some uh, Billman, here we go, some historical Billman, and I'm going to want to paint their flesh. Please, can I have some flesh paint? There you go, that colour. Fine, you think, no problem. But what about if I don't want to go for that brand, I want to go for something else? Maybe I'll buy my flesh paint from a different brand, then I'll buy that one from a different brand. Oh. Then there's a company called Scale Colour, they do one too, that looks sort of similar-ish, a bit more golden, but yeah, it's basic flesh tone. Okay, right. Oh, hang on, Vallejo, they do one as well, obviously, you know. They also do a flesh tone, many different kinds of flesh tone, all these brands do different kinds of flesh tone, but you'd think, okay, well, paint's paint, right? A, a colour's a colour, it's, it's a pinky fleshy colour. I'm going to take it out of the bottle, put it on a palette, put it on a brush, put it on a miniature, and it'll do the job, whatever I do with it. Not quite. This is where it gets weird. You'd think that all of these colours being, I suppose, simple, straightforward, single, possible sort of base tones or light or, or straightforward flesh tones, of a not exactly the same, you know, reasonably different tones, I suppose, of, of a, a shades of a skin colour. You'd expect that they would do broadly the same thing when you put them on a brush or on a palette because they're from the same sort of family of colours. No, no, they don't. The first thing I realised when I started using these things is that the consistency and behaviour of paint changes from brand to brand. It also changes from colour to colour, which is really weird for a beginner. But let's just establish something. Yeah. If you're going to go and buy some paint and choose a brand, there's every possibility that if you choose, say, this band of pink paint and open it and start to play with it, then it will behave differently to this brand of pinky fleshy paint when you open it. That's because 
Different manufacturers mix their paints in slightly different ways. So some may be thicker or thinner than others. They may have more or less tone in them than another paint, so on and so forth. And that creates inconsistency in the way they behave, which can be obviously uh, unpredictable if you're not used to it, if you're mixing brands and mixing paints. But let's assume that you're not going to do that. Let's assume that you're going to stick to one paint brand, which is what I did. You know, I, when I got started, I stuck with one paint brand and I kicked off with um, mainly with Vallejo, which is a Spanish company which makes a fantastically huge array of miniature paints. What are they? Yeah, and what's in it? Why is it different? Why do I need a miniature paint in the first place? Why do I need a miniature paint in the first place? Why can't I just go to a shop? And just buy you know some acrylic paint or watercolors or oil paint or poster paint or just some paint and put that on a miniature well you can do that you, you can many people paint things with miniatures with things other than miniature paints lots of people do that the vast majority of people do paint miniatures with paints that are designed for miniatures specifically aimed at miniatures and they are, most of the time, a kind of paint called acrylic paint. What's that? Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I sort of know, right? And they're useful, acrylic paints for painting miniatures, for, for sort of three reasons, I suppose. Um, first reason is uh, a paint, when we say a paint, a liquid, and let's get some paint on a palette, right, and we'll just play with it and show you what happens. When we get our paint and stick that on there, you think, well, it's paint. It's just paint. It's got ingredients, okay? Which I'm gonna concentrate on, you know, the three that I'm aware of that we need to, to give a monkeys about, basically. There's three things in here, in any paint, acrylic paint. There's going to be water, obviously, because it's liquid and the liquid is water. Um, there's going to be pigment, something called pigment, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically the colour of the paint. It's a, it's a substance which creates the colour, often a sort of powdery substance if it had no water. And it, there is the acrylic in, in it. So acrylic, okay, is what... Uh, people might refer to as the medium. It's kind of like the method of delivery or the, the, the sort of thing that separates this paint out from other types of paint or other liquids. Yeah, it's the medium. It's the, the thing that, it's its reason for existence. It's, it's, um, it's the thing that binds it all together and makes it do what we want it to do. And the acrylic, as far as I can work out anyway, is most interesting for miniatures because it has a sort of, uh, properties which mean that it dries fast but not too fast and also there is a kind of um, slightly sticky consistency which mean, means it, it, it binds to the model quickly almost a glue like consistency it's not like glue but you know it's got a stickiness to it which is the right level of stickiness we're getting very technical now aren't we it's got a certain stickiness which uh, allows it to, to stick onto a model and stay there and then dry so that's what makes acrylic paint good for painting miniatures. So there are three things inside it. And the uh, level at which you, you mix these things together. So if you have more water in a paint, it'll be runnier, obviously. If you have more acrylic in a paint, it'll be stickier. If you have more pigment in a paint, it will be thicker and gloopier, yeah. And that's it's variations in these ingredients between manufacturers, which means that uh, it can be confusing um, as to to um, why you would take one paint and do something differently than you do with a different manufacturer and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's interesting. As far as choosing a miniature paint goes, right? Like choosing a manufacturer, right? I'm not going to list all of the manufacturers. We'll be here forever, right? Um, there are loads of them. 
there's dozens, dozens and dozens and dozens of miniature paint paints to go, to, paint manufacturers to go to. Here in the good old United Kingdom, uh, you tend to come across two or three uh, that, that are knocking around a lot in the UK, and then in America, there are uh, some some other brands which you see a lot um, are around a lot. Uh, I mean, Vallejo is a very common one. You know, it's it's easy to get hold of. It's even sold in shops in the UK in some cases. But you can get it off the internet with one search and a couple of clicks and it will arrive, you know, the next day, so on and so forth. You also got to see the Games Workshop paints, you know, straight from Games Workshop's website and their shops. Uh, you've got Foundry is reasonably common among historical war gamers. It's kicking around a lot by War Games Foundry, War Gaming Company. And then I've got Scale Colour here who kind of represent um, my first foray into the slightly, arguably, slightly more sort of alternative and sort of niche, more artisan type range ranges, yeah. Scale Colours are... Um, produced uh, not in this country actually again uh, in Spain I believe so yeah all of these will work for you all right you're gonna get preferences if you knew you're gonna think well I like thicker paint or I like thinner paint I like this kind of paint I like this kind of brand you buy some of these they'll work all right none of them are not going to work they're all gonna I've had perfectly good results with all four of these brands doing various different things with different paints and all four of these brands. None of them do not work. You cannot not paint a good miniature with all four of these brands. So that reassures you. So if you stick a pin in a manufacturer and stick with it, you know, the, the main manufacturers, you're not gonna go wrong. They're not gonna fail you, okay? There's lots of opinions and views about there about who's better than other and you know what to stick to. But most war gamers will tell you, all right, if you open one of these, you buy 20 of these from one manufacturer in 20 different colours, they will work, all right? They're not gonna let you down. So don't worry too much about pinning a manufacturer, you know, and, and deciding which manufacturer to go with. Let's also now talk about quantity, because obviously that's not a lot of paint, okay? And it's 17 milliliters for Vallejo, uh, Foundry is a bit bigger at 20, Scale colour again, I believe, is 17. Yes, Citadel, they're always smaller. Um, slash, guess which are they're always smaller in terms of you know basic paints. They're 12 mil. All right, you think that's how long will that last me? Some of these paints are going to be two pounds fifty, three, four dollars. You know, in some cases, you might even go up to four, five dollars, you know, for one paint. Not these, but in some cases, you will. Yeah, but, but you know. About two fifty, three pound, three pound fifty to US dollars. You're talking. You might go up to six dollars for a bottle of paint. In some cases, five dollars for one bottle of paint. You think if I buy that to paint flesh on my men, <laughs> my on my miniatures, am I going to run out after I've painted thirty of them? No, you're not. All right, <laughs> you're definitely not. Um, this is a blue I bought from Vallejo three years ago. I've painted probably a bit of blue on dozens, arguably hundreds of miniatures. I don't think it's even half empty. All right, there's plenty in there for what we're going to be doing with miniatures. If you're painting lots of big miniatures like tanks and stuff like that, yeah, maybe an issue. But if you're painting 28 millimeter figures, one by one, <laughs> you know. The coverage, think about the coverage of, you know, that dude's face and fingers. And even if you're going to decide for some reason to paint his trousers in that colour, okay? Think about the coverage that's in there versus the surface area. Hundreds, yeah? Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds. Don't worry about quantity, yeah? Not an issue. Price, yeah, it does vary. I suppose Games Workshop are traditionally on the slightly more expensive side of things and uh, Vallejo I suppose are not the cheapest but they are at the cheaper third of the end 
I suppose, in that you can get uh, your hands on about 12 Vallejo paints for about 25, 30 quid, no problem, which is about $50, $40 in the States. Games Workshop, 12 sets, 12 decent Games Workshop paints might hit you for 35, 40 quid in some cases, 50, 55 dollars in the States. Yeah, it seems like a big investment, doesn't it? But once you've bought yourself 30 paints, you will not need to buy any more for ages unless you are like me and you get a bit addicted to buying paint and you buy uh, too many paints, too many paints, too many paints, too many paints, and there's more in drawers. I know it's a bit of a problem I have. Beyond that, my advice for total beginners is. The best thing to do to get used to uh, to get good at using miniature paint in the right way on miniatures is to do it a lot. There's no other way around it. And once you start to paint with lots of different paints and different colours and different shades of a colour, you will understand what I mean about variation between the thickness of paints between colours within a manufacturer's range and trying to use the right consistency of paint. I'm not going to talk about mixing today, I'm not going to talk about painting techniques, I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. I'm just going to talk about, you know, the the principle of using miniature paint and what it's for and so on and so forth. So, we'll just do a couple of quick demos and you'll start to see what I mean. So I'm going to get a palette on the go, a brush. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, I put a paint pot and we're gonna get some paint on a miniature which sounds straightforward and it is it is really straightforward but I'll show you some things that I do now which I did not do when I started when it comes to simply putting paint on a miniature All right so we've got a water roses plastic Billman 28 millimeter and we're gonna put um, some flesh tone on his face and on his hands using for the sake of argument this but I could have used anything foundry flesh shade 5a foundry flesh shade okay first things first we shake our paint yeah if you just pick it up for the first day and for the first time that day shake your paint if you're opening it all right why do we do that? Because of this. Paint, if it sits, separates. Acrylic paint will separate. Almost any kind of acrylic paint will separate if you, because remember we have pigment, water and acrylic. We've got three things in there. Leave it long enough, things will settle. Yeah. And if you just take the top off of that and pour it, you're just going to get what I think in there. So I think what well, if you if I've this is the paint I left ages ago, right? And I've peeled the label away so you can see the separation. I think what we've got here is a situation where the pigment has settled at the bottom, which is the colour you can see here. And towards the top, the lighter stuff, which I think in this case is the water, has drifted to the top. Separation, because that's heavier than that. And if you don't realise that's happened, you take the lid off that, you're just going to get water. You're not going to get a fully mixed paint. You're not going to get any pigment. So you do have to shake your paints. So now I've peeled this label away. I'm just going to shake this up and then you'll see this return to its actual colour before we actually use the other paint. And I'm talking a good old <laughs> on Rattler for, uh, you know, this one needs a good one, but five, 10 seconds per paint normally is fine. There we go. It's paint again, as if by magic. So actually I'll do that, now I've done that. We'll use this as a base, base shade. It's like a tan color. How much paint do you need? Not that much. <laughs> you need a tiny amount. I'm doing that so you can see, see it, yeah. If you're painting five figures in an evening or whatever, 10 figures, you need like 
half that. A tiny little fingernail worth. Okay. Then we're going to get some paint on our brush and move it around a bit. Now, Vallejo paints, for example, in this case, right? I'd class them as kind of, in general, <laughs> across the range, as a medium thickness paint, I suppose. Some of their colours are thin, actually, are quite thin. But, in general, they're, this, they're fairly medium consistency. So they're not too thick, in general, and they're not usually overly thin. However, with any miniature paint, if you're just starting out, I'd advise you to water it down. Okay? I'm going to say that again. Water down the paint. One more time. Water down the paint. Why would you do that? I hear you cry. It's miniature paint. It's designed for this. I've already bought paint specific for the job. Why do I need to do more to it? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's because these paints are deliberately designed by manufacturers to be something that can be adapted upwards. So you start with something that's reasonably thick and then it's easier to, to thin that down than it is to thicken it up for obvious reasons. So to hit the widest range of paint preferences possible, they probably make things slightly on the thicker side of things, which gives you a spectrum to go up with watering down. But why would you? Why don't you just? Why don't you just paint with that? I ask. Well, because they're they're done thick. They're made thick deliberately so that you can change them and move around with them, and paint can behave differently. And you can get it to do what you specifically want it to do and suit your specific style, which is getting a bit technical and fancy, but it, it is true. So, how do I put that paint on there and make it look all right? Don't know. It depends what you're going for. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking the mick, but you know, it does, it does depend what you're trying to do. If I was going to use a certain technique, I would treat that paint differently to what I'm about to do. If I was going to wet blend, I'd treat it differently to what I'm about to do. If I was going to do layers, there's a different technique for that again. If I was just going to do base, wash, highlight, I'd do differently with that again. It depends what we're trying to do here, yeah? But in general, as a general rule, if we're just going to put some paint and get some colour on there and start looking at a miniature as painted, I advise you to water it down. Because this kind of starting point at which the paint comes out of the bottle is quite on the thick side if you don't do anything to it. The consequences if you just use that out of the bottle all the time and every single time you take paint out of the bottle and put it straight on your miniature, consequences are that a lot of the time the paint will be a bit thick, a bit stodgy, and it will eliminate the detail in your model. It will be splodgy and gloopy, and you're going to end up um, killing off a lot of the detail. It'll look messy and inconsistent. So as a general rule, water down your paint. Enough said. Right. How do we water down our paint? Easy. <laughs> Alright, this is what I tend to do. Because I've got too much here, what I'm going to do is... Pull a little bit out, so I'm not dipping my brush in that big blob, and just get a manageable amount going there. Okay. So I've now got a smaller pool of my unthickened paint, and then I'm literally going to get a teeny brush full of water. Not so it's dripping, not so that it's dry and just slightly, but you can't even see that I know. but. Just so there's like a tip of brush full of water for that amount of paint in general. Depends on the paint again. And I'm just going to weave it into the paint. How much water and what you do with it varies from paint to paint. So how do I know when it's ready? I know, I know. This is complicated, isn't it? It's even making it more complicated than it seems. But how do I know when it's ready? I tend to go for the consistency, if I could describe it. If it looks like... Say, for example, okay. I make it look like this. That looks very runny. And that is almost like water in itself. That's too thin. Okay. 
I take this un and like dob that around, it's barely moving at all. It's just splodging. That's too thick. What we're after, okay, as a general rule, depending on the paint, is probably something that's kind of like uh, full fat milk, maybe, or semi somewhere between semi skimmed and unfat milk, um, full fat milk, okay. So let's work on that bit there and get that to the point where it's not gloopy. So, just add it in a little bit. That's still slightly too thick. Let's get a good example for you. There we go. So it's moving around, but it's not stripping out all sort of colour and thickness completely. That's what we want. And then on we go. And that will allow us to get our tiny brush with our tiny amount of paint and go on nice and evenly. Okay? Or reasonably evenly. And hey presto, we've put some colour on a tiny hand in a consistent way. Okay? That's it. I mean, I just wanted to introduce people to the concept of how acrylic miniature paint behaves, uh, what it's for, uh, and how you get it out of a bottle onto a miniature. Uh, and I think if that looked to a beginner like I was creating a very precise scientific recipe for water versus paint mixture, it's not really. Yeah, you'll know. You'll get to a point when you're going to know, to the point where when paint comes out of a bottle onto your palette or wherever you will know you will know if it's a bit too thick a bit too thin you're going to look at it you're going to play with it with your brush and you'll be like you your mind will say to you that's thick or that's too thin i need to do something here if something is thin if a paint is thin so let me get you a thin paint and i'll show you what i mean a very thin paint um, if something is thin, like yellows are often quite thin for some reason, a yellow is thin, whoops, not that yellow, yellows often come across as thin, you know that was moving around then, they move around so much yellows, whee! If something is thin like yellow, yeah, most paint brands have a form of bright yellow that's thin, yeah. Yeah, it's thin, see? Thinner than that. What do you mean about that? Simple answer. Paint two or three times. <laughs> yeah, paint, paint it on two or three times. And that is how you manage the consistency and flow and behavior on a very basic level acrylic paint so that's it that's some of the basic concepts problems questions that came up in my mind when I first started playing around with paints and different manufacturers and different colors and trying to get them from the palette onto a little plastic or metal figure I hope that's opened a few doors in your mind if you're a brand new beginner and started to answer some questions you've got about what this stuff actually is and how best to handle it Deliberate practice <laughs> is the answer, but knowing some of these basic things about what this stuff is designed for, how it's meant to be used, uh, will hopefully help you on your way. <laughs>